Hey everyone, welcome into another DLC review video. Uh, I am not in Tivoli Zoo for this one just because the uh, piece count is getting up there and the performance is starting to uh, to lag a little bit in that file. So I thought I'd start with a blank slate here to highlight this DLC. And I've got to say, uh, this might be the best DLC yet. Um, not to spoil too much of it, but you'll see as we go through here, uh, just a really, really amazing addition to the game and so many things that so many of us have been uh, asking for. And there's there's things in here that we were like begging for in Planet Coaster as well that um, would have been absolutely game changing. So I'm thrilled to see them as additions to uh, Planet Zoo. So let's start with the uh, the new building sets here. So if we go down here, um, what you'll see is there are now some pieces that are basically a four by two uh, grid. So these are the European bridge arch stone. Um, they are, I believe they are flexi color. Yes, uh, they are flexi color. Um, these pieces are all separate. So you have just this basic piece here and then you've got these additions that you can add on. So you've got a um, like a keystone piece. And then the arch stone itself, um, these are fairly thick, so you can, um, you know, sink them in as, as much or as little as you want and obviously have a ton of other uses, um, you know, right off the bat, I can think of, especially these straight pieces here. Um, you know, you can sink these in and you could develop like a completely custom cobblestone set. Um, you know, if you want to go crazy on the piece count. So just incredibly useful, really versatile. Obviously, they're flexi color as well. Um, you've also got a European bridge arch uh, wood panel set here. So these are designed to be sort of more like your canal pieces. Um, and then this is the topper piece that would go in between uh, these over here. So um, just really, really useful along with these two. So these are the bridge supports. Um, there's one piece that is curved, so this would be the breakwater side if you're building using it for a bridge. Um, another obvious use of this could be for retaining walls, uh, things like that. This piece is just um, completely vertical. Uh, and then you've got a capstone that can go on both of those. Um, so this comes in a two meter uh, length, as well as each of these comes in a four meter length. And then these are also just square bridge supports. Um, so you've got uh, basically what amounts to a column there. And then you've got this piece, which is um, basically two, uh, two count of that in terms of depth, but same in height. Um, uh, moving along, you've got another support piece here. So the thing I love about this, and you'll see I've got, so this is the reverse side of it. Um, again, this could be incredibly useful for uh, concrete, um, you know, things, sidewalks, things like that. You know, you, you move them around there and boom, you've got sidewalks with the expansion joints all in between. And if you want it to be, you know, a different, um, piece count, you can go there and you've got a little bit of more variety. And again, this is flexi color as well. So, uh, you can see why I'm so excited for, you know, for someone like me who plays the game focusing on realism, um, this set is adding a ton of pieces that can be used in all kinds of different ways. And remember, you're going to get the most out of this game if you look at these pieces and, you know, you don't see a, a trim piece here. You see, you know, potential for stone to, to go on the ground or, um, you know, same with this. You don't see a, a capstone. You see uh, a sidewalk. So always be thinking about how you can use these pieces that are different from their intended purpose. Um, you also have these decorative limestone pieces uh, that are really well scaled and help you to flesh out the remainder of that classic um, set, really. I think they go really well with, uh, with that classic set that came with the initial uh, launch of the game. Also got this piece here, which I believe um, is intended to kind of go like that uh, as an ornamental decoration um, here as well. Yeah, so you can see those are those are the intended use of them. Obviously, a ton of different uses too. You can even uh, you know knock this one down and and find all kinds of ways to do decorative dormers and things like that. So. Um, 
yeah, I'm absolutely in love with this uh, first set here. So you've got different gables um, here as well that you can use and different uh, pieces that obviously, you know, all kinds of uses for this. And just in terms of decorating a facade, even you could sink it into, um, you know, sink it into a wall as, as a decorative piece, you know, something like that as an example. So tons of different uses for all of these pieces. They're all flexi color. Um, here is another bridge piece. So I believe this is, um, if you look at this and the, the way the dimensions work, you can cover a path, an in-game path with this piece um, if you wanted to have a bridge set. Um, yeah, and then this I think obviously is intended to be used for, for some of the canal stuff you saw in the promotional uh, work. So there's a brick version and then this piece has a limestone um, interior there. So um, Moving along here, we've got a European drawbridge. This is something that you could make functional if you hit a um, hit a path in there, but obviously really more just for decorative purposes. Um, so that is the bulk of the uh, of this set that kind of goes together. And then you get into here, and this one is incredible. So you've got a realistic stone wall set, and it comes in all the different pieces or sizes that all these other ones come in. Um, and another thing to point out I'll show later is uh, virtually all of the sets in the game now have a 4x2, a 2x2, and a, uh, I think this is a 2x1 piece that are non-graded. So that is incredibly useful, especially this 4x2 piece. There's so many times that I run into where I don't want, you know, I've got like a door opening and I don't want... Uh, you know all this space or I don't want a huge opening like this and this piece comes in uh, in handy instead of having to use like uh, like the surround the station surrounds um, to get a shorter wall so uh, really really helpful to have those in the game but as you can see it's pretty much a full set um, the texture on this is amazing it's really really well done I know a lot of people had made versions of this and put it on the workshop where they used all kinds of different stone pieces in the game and sunk them into like the the plaster wall i think um this is obviously uh, uh going to be a game changer for anyone who's been utilizing those i've already got a few areas in tivoli zoo that i know i need to go through and replace um, a ton of pieces with from stuff from this set just from an optimization standpoint um, the other thing that's included in the game are these memorial plaques. So these two are editable signs. Um, you can change the colors on them. And then this one is really uh, ultimately just a screen. So you can come in here and you can change the billboard. Um, it doesn't seem to work with these uh, these WebM um, files, but just like a JPEG um, or a PNG will work in, inside of these. Obviously beneficial because they're smaller than any of the other screens in the game. So you have a ton of different uses for this uh, piece as well. Um, so that is the, the bulk of that set here. Um, and then the other game changer are these decals. So the um, I, I don't know the exact number of decals, but you can see I've used them on the, the plaster wall here. And then you can see all the individual decals as we go, go down here. And remember, these don't have to be just used on walls. Um, so you can use them obviously in, uh, on the ground as you've, you can see I've done here. Um, I think it really sells itself if you recolor some of these cracks and things like this on the concrete and the asphalt path. Um, really really sells the idea of some wear and tear on your sidewalks um, if you want there i know there's a lot of cases in the u.s where like old pathways you know old brick walkways have been paved over with asphalt and sometimes the the brick um, starts to come back through and show itself and same thing with uh, stone like this so um, and then you the other really really cool addition are uh, these surface decals, um, the, uh, s excuse me, they're all decals, um, the grunge. So these are all, uh, recolorable as well. Um, so you could use them just as general dirt or even rust on the side of like a metal piece. Um, you can see here, they look really good. If you kind of sink them into the ground and you've got some dirt on the bottom of the walls. Um, but yeah, here's, here's basically all of the decal options you have. So there's a ton of different brick options um, these ones are not um, or oh, they are recolored so just the the uh, edge is re what's recolorable on these um, so if you look at uh, 
yeah so like the edge piece that blends into whatever your wall texture is that is recolorable but the brick uh, is not you can recolor the interior of these pieces so if you look here you've got um and see how it changes yeah so you'll you'll get an idea there and then this set down here you've got uh, two color options so you've got the concrete where it blends and then you've got the uh the painted brick that you can change the color on um here same thing you can just uh, go through and change all of the the color of the stones and rocks which i forgot to mention this set is uh completely customizable in terms of your color so tons of options there as well um, and that's where you see these pieces come into play where you can blend them nicely uh, along with that set and then the uh, as i mentioned um, these pieces you could use for if you change the color here to like an orange or something um, this piece I think yeah there you go and then maybe do some metal or something on the outside yeah so you can see how that could be up against a piece of metal and really give you the appearance of rust um, in addition to just wear and tear on a wall as well and then the other uh, option is there's a moss texture which is um, probably intended to be used for these uh, these stone walls but again, can be used on the ground, or um, I think these will be incredibly useful for like your backstage areas, or if you are the type of builder who likes to have barns and things like that, like for the hoofstock and things, you can have just this sort of dirt and mud that kind of transitions from maybe like an exterior yard into a concrete pad just to sell, um, you know, sell that overlap if you do something like this. it here so yeah you see something like that um, I need to make my swatch a lot smaller <laughs> so yeah you 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 get the idea you can really start to tweak this and um, you know do some coloring and, and make it look like some of that dirt's making its way onto like a hard surface inside of a of a barn so um, for me I know these decals are the things that I'm most excited about especially here you know you change the color of them to match the uh the asphalt or the concrete here and it really just looks like damage um so really 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 happy to have those in the game i'm gonna go through and i need to kind of uh dirty up tivoli a little bit and make it look like it's um not brand new and pristine so that's a huge huge addition getting into some of the um the scenery items here you've got again tons of things that are useful for multitude of purposes so you've got these uh, metal beams which are recolorable um, these flags are all recolorable and they come in individual pieces as well as the uh, the rope strands here that are already curved and then you've got straight versions as well so if you wanted to have a longer curve and didn't want to go through and add each individual flag you could use something like this um, these shields are also all recolorable. Um, these are not, these um, flags are not recolorable and that's probably just because they're so highly decorated, but these ones all can be recolored. Um, but tons of options. You've got these here, which can be used for, you know, you could sink something like this. It would be great for like an awning on the storefront or something. Um, if you didn't necessarily want to use it as like a tent so yeah you could you know hide it inside the wall and and use it as an awning um, so tons again tons of different options for how you can use these one thing I love about this set is they um, they didn't just build them as individual scenery pieces so like in the past something like this would have just come as one piece but instead they broke it up into all these different pieces so you've got the the roof here and then all of these are separate pieces so you can completely customize these tents um, however you'd like them to be and, and similarly with these signs here so you can see um, you've got a an animal sign for each of the new animals in the game but they come in multiple pieces so they can be completely separated out um, and people more creative than I am can probably figure out some uh, some unique ways to use these uh, these are also are not recolorable um, going back to the second row here again more details 
big and little details. So these bells are recolorable as, long, as well as these um, brass finials. And again, getting down to very small sizes, which is fantastic. You can come up with a ton of different ways to utilize these that are not, again, not for their intended purpose. Um, you've got a shuttered window. These stained glass murals, um, which are not recolorable for probably the same reason that, uh, that these are not recolorable. Um, these, however, are recolorable and lots of different uses for, uh, for these small pieces as well. Um, you've got a wall clock. Again, more metal decorative items for your facades. Um, this is a limestone cap decoration and then uh, more shutter options and even as small as the hinge uh, is now something that um, that they added so again this is something in the past where it would have just probably come as attached to the shutter it wouldn't have been broken apart um, but the fact that they took the time to break these pieces apart um, is a game changer for me and just really really appreciate their uh, the time and effort that went into doing that because it makes all of this stuff so much more versatile and how it can be utilized in the game. Um, so you've got these mooring posts here for like the canal scenes using the uh, the gondola and then a pillow for the gondola and a, a, a gondolier hat and then another thing that I'm psyched about are these metal um, railings. So you've got curved pieces here but then where it really shines in my opinion are the straight pieces. So um, obviously ton of different uses for these. So you've got a four meter set, a four meter option, excuse me, and a two meter option. Um, and then you've got these planter pieces again that are all separated out. So even this bracket or this support could be utilized for a ton of different things in the game. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people will come up like I, I can even picture like animal feeders inside of barns. You know, you take like two of these and then you take some of the metal pieces, the tiny metal pieces and put them across here and put in some, uh, you know, um, some of the roof pieces to sell like some hay. So tons of different uh, uses for these uh, as well. And again, fully recolorable. The, uh, oh, and another thing that's useful is we have another uh, mulch piece. So this is obviously much smaller than some of the pieces that we have um, and will be very, very useful. Okay, so, um, more fence pieces here, so you have cast iron, again with another very small thin metal beam which is recolorable. Um, you'll, you'll notice a theme developing here. Uh, and then this is just that planter piece here uh, on the end. So it also comes with, um, I believe these are not a part of the DLC. I think these are just a part of the update. Um, more plants, some of them might be actually, I, I take that back, I think some of them are included. Some of them are in the DLC, so um, which ones I'm not entirely sure, honestly, but uh, these trees are really, really well done. So you've got three options here for an Aleppo pine tree, um, which I will definitely be utilizing these inside of um, Tivoli Zoo, especially some of these taller ones here. And then you've got uh, cork oak trees as well that are really nicely done. This is just a very, very nice like generic looking deciduous tree that probably goes into a lot of different climates and a lot of zoos that people would have. Then you get into um, London plane tree. Again, same thing. Very, very um, widely applicable use inside lots of different zoos. A little bit different than like the fever tree and stuff, which had a beautiful canopy, but that harsh yellow just, you know, for me in my zoo, this type of climate, it just did not fit in. So i um, very excited to see some additional options in terms of what I can develop in the canopy uh, for Tivoli. So uh, I've also got four olive trees here. And then this here is a uh, grapevine, um, which these do not have any fruit on them. So very, very versatile in how you can use them. You can put them up against like a chain link fence and try to use them as a hedge. Um, and then the bigger you get, they have fruit on the, um, on the design. Let me click on something else so you can see. Yeah. So these have grapes as well as this version, and then they separated out the grapes too. So if you did want to, uh, want to add grapes on some of these, you could, or use them for another purpose. Um, you've also got periwinkle flowers here and periwinkle leaves. 
And then the last thing is a dog rose bush, and you have three versions of those. These are another one that I'm very excited about. Great structure, um, going to be a very, very useful landscaping bush um, for my zoo. And then here, randomly, uh, there are six decorative eggs, um, which maybe is a maybe is a little like teaser at something in the future. Maybe I have no idea. That is not like me saying I know something. I I don't. I'm just wondering if maybe they're trying to give us a little hint about what might be coming. So um, we'll see what the the future holds there. Um, we also have these neon signs now for most of the shops. Um, and again, they took the time to break things out here. So you've got um, a wall support here. You've got a wall clamp. So if you want to like hang one of these from the wall, you can. You've got a ground base. So I've got all these on the, the base here. Um, and then these are all just the same signs that are up above. So they're, they're completely separate pieces. Um, let's look at these at night, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, so again, these are all really well done. I'm a big fan of these uh, LED lights. Um, you can sync these in and start to develop some really cool neon on some buildings, like give it a little thin bead on a wall like that, and you can start to develop some really cool stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what people do with, uh, with the neon here. These are obviously fully recolorable. So whatever color you want your signs to be, you can make them. Same with these uh, signs here. I forgot to mention, fully recolorable. Most of the pieces are in this game or in this update. Um, you've even got a little uh, tube end cap here, which you can see I put on this one. Um, these I can only imagine the creative ways people are going to utilize them, probably in like sign making and things like that. So um, very very versatile and useful piece there uh, as well. Then you get into some of the more decorative stuff for the holidays. So you've got a European LED um, star there. You've got some these tiny little candles, which there's a lantern down here that this candle goes really nicely in. I'll turn the, the play button on so you can see the flame. Um, these ceiling fans are incredible. And again, they took the time to break out the pieces into separate things. So it gives you a lot more flexibility in how you can utilize them. Um, but very, very excited for these uh, ceiling fans to be used in a lot of different areas. Also these amazing ceiling lights. Um, big fan of these. I can already see these being utilized in like people's gift shops and restaurants and things like that. And again, took the time to separate out the various pieces. So you've got the, the ceiling rows, the light cable, um, same thing here. You've got uh, smaller versions of that light. And then um, over here, you get into some of the more festive like Christmas market stuff that they talked about in the DLC. Uh, some of the lighting here, which again can be utilized in all sorts of creative ways. You've got um, fairy lights here. These pieces in particular, I think, could be used in a lot of creative ways. I was kind of hoping these lights might be a little bit bigger. I know we've got some bulbs already in the game from the, um, the Arctic uh, DLC um, in the first year, but I was kind of hoping for something along the lines of what we had in Planko, which were just these very simple uh, round lights that were um, fully flexi color. So, but these again, very, very um, useful and recolorable. So, there's all kinds of ways to use them. You get this lantern, and again, I put the little candle in there so you can see what that looks like. Um, really, really well done. And then down here, these are obviously for the uh, the animals that are there in the DLC. Um, so, really well done. Love the design. They obviously fit into like a like a European Christmas market um, type vibe. So uh, whoever designed a lot of this stuff in this set is very talented. And, um, you know, I mean, that's been true for most of the stuff with that, that comes from Frontier. You know, artistic design is usually always on point for them. So uh, really well done. And then coming over here, sorry, let me go back to daytime. And sorry, I'm trying to go quickly so that this video isn't uh, insanely long and you get an idea for 
what's in it. So um, this is obviously a scenery piece, not um, not functional in any way, but um, pretty well scaled. Um, you know, it's it's honestly pretty well scaled. Most of the stuff that they usually do is super huge, um, and I feel like these are are starting to get really well scaled. The only thing I wish here is that they took the time to separate out all of those little details from the scenery pieces. I wish they would have separated out these wheels. Um, they did that for a lot of the Planko stuff. Like we got, uh, there was a set where we got like trash trucks and fire trucks and all that kind of stuff. And the wheels um, were separate scenery pieces so that um, people could create custom vehicles and things like that. So my, that's my only sort of nitpick in this, uh, in this set is that. Um, also, we've got the European Ferry. There is, you know, early speculation that these might be functional. Um, I think they, they put that to rest um, fairly quickly and just, you know, people figured out it was a scenery item. But they, uh, they look fantastic. They're really well done. It's not something that I'm obviously going to use in Tivoli, but um, I know people will find a, a wide ranging use for them. Um, you got a wooden gondola here, and then I know they've highlighted this in some recent social media posts. You've got a food truck, um, and this is a really, really nice feature for the new counters. So you can see here, here's the food truck by itself. Um, here it is with the new food counter inside of it. And um, so not every single shop has these available to them right now. Um, they did say in a recent live stream that, uh, you know, they said yet. So, you know, hopefully that means the other uh, shops in the game. So like the gift shops and like the info booth and all that kind of stuff are going to have these counters available to them as well. The thing I want to point out here that is a game changer for me is it's not on a four by four grid. It is on a four by two grid, meaning you can have a much shallower space that you can put these in and have them actually function. Um, I've got a couple areas inside of Tivoli where I wasn't able to get the big, you know, four by four squares in, even though I was using the the boxless shop mod, I couldn't get them inside the building I was making. Now with this, I can absolutely get two of them in there and um, you'll see in the next episode of Tivoli exactly what I'm talking about. But um, this was a godsend for me because now I can make it uh, much more functional than it was. So um, huge props for those. Those are something that, again, we asked for in like Planko for the entire development cycle and to see it in the game is super useful. Thank you so much Frontier for doing this. Um, it just ups the creat creativity and customization options for people inside of their zoos. Um, and then this is also another awesome addition. So uh, Planet Coaster had a restaurant feature, um, but it was just a four by four box. And um, basically people walked into it the same way they did like the, the in-game restroom in Planet Zoo, where it was just sort of a, a dark void. And in fact, it's like this. So it was like this. Uh, it was just basically a, a cube that you could put around and then you had to hide these other cubes and each and each of those cubes was, you know, quote unquote, a table in the restaurant or um, they had a hotel feature too. So same thing, you walked into this box and then there was other boxes that you kind of had to hide and those were your hotel rooms. So um, this is a really great feature. You can see they're actually, you know, working and cooking back here, which is awesome. And this person, um, the way these function, is guests coming through here they uh, pay and put their order in here they walk through this sort of void here and then um, they make their way to any of the tables that you linked to the restaurant so you can see this is one of the blueprints that comes with the dlc um, and you've got the the chairs up top here the table and chairs and so when they walk through you know this little section here they pop up and can sit down at these tables um, same thing over here. So they'd walk through that little, I mean, ideally you would set it up so that your patio is like over here or something and people would walk out and sit in these tables. Um, but it comes with the restaurant feature comes with, um, a bench and then a round table for, uh, the guests to sit at. So again, this is something that there's so many diners in planet coaster that, um, people would have killed for something like this. So, uh, I'm glad to see it in the game. It definitely ups, um, even if you're not someone who just sort of treats this like a sandbox, if you're looking for additional gameplay creativity and want to play, you know, Planet Zoo that way, then this DLC and update is for you as well. Um, 
finally getting into uh, the animals. So we'll start with the um, the exhibit animal, which is the fire salamander. Um, so let's see if we can find one of these guys in here. They're very, oh, yeah, here we go. They're very small. Um, here, we'll put, put it on play. But as usual, I think um, the modeling is, is really well done um, for these guys here. So those are the exhibit animal. Then we start with the ibex, um, alpine ibex. And these are also really, really well done. I think uh, I have no use for these guys in Tivoli, unfortunately. But I wish I did, especially uh, with these climbing mountain um habitat enrichment items so i haven't seen them use this yet but i haven't really put them in here uh for very long so um we'll see if maybe we'll catch them back here so they also use the uh the scratching the scott's pine tree um as a scratching post um i think all of the animals in this dlc with the exception of the badger will utilize that feature um the other new element is called the scarecrow feeder um, so it's a new enrichment item for, um, animals like this. And I think there's, I don't know if it will say, no, sorry. You have to pull up the scenery, but obviously if you go to habitat and then enrichment items, you can see all the animals that this, um, can be used for. So we'll take a little bit closer look at the, the models here. So obviously this is not a habitat that does them justice. I know people will come up with really cool options, but um, this rock climbing wall is definitely a welcome feature. And uh, something too along those lines. So if we go to, I'm gonna go ahead and pause. If we go to rocks in the faux rock sets. So I believe Uh, yes, so there's new small faux rocks as well. Um, so you've got five new options now in the faux rock set, which, um, again, very welcome additions uh, to the DLC and to the game. Um, these might actually be a, a part of the base update, um, but nice to have those. So then we get into the second animal, and it is the badger. And... Obviously, this led to the um, hyped up animal burrow, so we can see how this functions now as an enrichment item. So, obviously, you need some space that it can function underground, but it comes as, let's see if I can duplicate it here, yeah. So, it comes as a set together, um, and you can just put it on the surface, and then you pop underneath, and you can see the underground burrow for these animals. And this is where you can put the, the camera um, inside and, and give the guests a, uh, a view of the burrow. So yeah, take a closer look at the badgers. I heard some people say that they thought these looked um, cartoony. Um, I think they're pretty well done, honestly. They're, they're on par, in my opinion, with the other animals in the game. Um, granted, that's this is not my area of expertise, but um, all, just comparing them to some of the other animal models, I think uh, I think these are well done. As you know, in addition to the other ones. So, um, coming over here to the European fallow deer, um, these are gorgeous. I think um, knocked these ones out of the park. Really, really well done. Um, and again, unfortunately, I don't have a use for them in my zoo, but uh, looking forward to seeing how people utilize them and the kind of habitats that uh, that people create for them. Um, you can see nice variation on them as well, um, which is good to see. And they, again, they use that scarecrow feeder as an enrichment item. And then last but not least, one that I will utilize in the Peaks to Prairie exhibit in Tivoli Zoo is the, um, the Eurasian lynx. So obviously somewhat different than the type of lynx we find in North America, 
but close enough and I'm definitely going to be utilizing these in the Peaks to Prairie exhibit along with the uh, the mountain lion from the last DLC. So um, once we get finished with the remainder of the uh, Toyota Elephant Passage, I'll be having a couple guest builders on and I'll start working on um, the Peaks to Prairie exhibit, but excited to get these animals in the game as well. Um, and they will use this uh, this enrichment item um, just like the other ones will. So, but yeah, I think I think these are are really well done too. So yeah, so those are the animals plus the uh, exhibit animal as well. And then the other thing, as I mentioned, most of the sets now have been given the addition of this uh, four by two piece, the two by two piece, and the one by two piece. Um, which is incredibly useful and very, very thankful to, uh, to see that as an addition in the game. Also, the classic set. So um, you have your classic windows and doors. These were not flexi color before, they are now. Um, which again, the more flexibility and creativity they can give us, the better, in my opinion. So, um, you know, there's some, there's honestly some things that when I started playing the game, I was trying to use these windows for. But, uh, but couldn't because they weren't uh, flexicolor. And so um, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time just sort of going back through my zoo and um, optimizing the game with, uh, with different options from this DLC and from this update. So um, that is the gist of what you get for um, this DLC. Again, I think it's absolutely worth your money if it would be a no brainer. Um, you know, if I was considering picking this up, um, you know, thankfully they, they gave me, you know, key for it, but I would hundred percent buy it. This is definitely one in my opinion, that is a must have just from even the decals alone would be enough for me to buy, um, to buy this DLC. So anyway, um, hope you guys all enjoy it. I, I can't wait to see all the ways that people utilize these pieces. Um, I know we're going to start to see some really phenomenal stuff, um, come out from, uh, creators out there. So hope you all enjoy the DLC. Thank you so much for watching the video. Um, and the, uh, the next video on the channel will be part two of the Toyota Elephant Passage in Tivoli Zoo. Um, and then as I mentioned, we'll be passing it off to a guest builder after that. So anyway, again, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the DLC and I'll see you in the next episode.